Well, for this, uh, for this pavilion, I did two works, and uh, important, to, important for this was actually to, to look at the space and, and react on it, especially this building that's uh, made to Trittfeld. And for this pavilion, we sort of tried to keep it open and keep the idea of, the, of a plaza, you know, like we can hang out and look at it. So I've been working on the verticality of the, of the building. This piece is, is called Promise. It's honored to uh, Stanley Brown. And what I did in this piece actually is using the measurements of Stanley Brown. And he had like the, he had measuring his body. So uh, the foot, the L and the step. And uh, that I kind of took in it, at, uh, took by using a certain sequence in the, in the wooden slats. And there are like three measurements, the Stanley Brown foot, the Stanley Brown step, and the Stanley Brown L. But to have like uh, uh, more possibilities, I add my initials in it, while a half a R, it's a half L, a Stanley Brown L, and a J is a half Stanley Brown step. So I'm getting like five measurements which, where I can make a certain sequence in it, certain combination. So like every stick has a known uh, combination of, of measurement, of distances. I add them in the, in, in, the, in the cube, and also the distance in the cube measure one foot by one foot by one foot is like 26 by 26 by 26 centimeter. And the cubes I add in the, in the space have for sure the same measurement. Important in the piece is also the material I'm using because the material comes from uh, Winti, an afro Surinamese uh, religion. And all the textile which are used in that afro Surinamese religion, uh, Winti, do have meaning in certain rituals. So giving honor to Stanley Brown in that context is important to look at him as a forefather, as somebody who inspired us, especially also in the connection of the Netherlands we're living in. Like Stanley Brown has been my countryman, born in Suriname, migrated to the Netherlands. In fact, he has always been an invisible person. He sort of wiped out his biography uh, uh, don't have pictures in, in catalogs. But I think like reflecting to him, I think it's so important to give him um, uh, a kind of respect, even though he, has, he wanted to remain invisible, but because he meant so much to a certain mentality, it's important for, uh, for me to honor him in this special pavilion. I was born in Suriname, and um, I did my first art school in Suriname. I'm very happy with, that art, with doing my art school in Suriname because we've been talking in Suriname about Western and non-Western history. So it sort of enlarged my, my, my brain of looking at a non-Western reference a lot more than what I noticed, like how Europe is actually looking to a non-Western uh, context. After art school in Suriname, I went, I went to the Rietveld Academy and finished it. And there, actually, I start work, after I started working as a professional artist, if I go back a little, like before uh, I went to art school in Suriname, I've been educated as a mechanical engineer. And that mechanical engineer, that knowledge is very important now for the works I'm doing at this moment. I'm working between New York and Amsterdam and uh, spending a lot of time in New York as well. The elements in the piece which are, uh, for instance, also I've been talking about the textiles. On the textiles I'm using kaolin. Kaolin is the porcelain clay you make porcelain from. And uh, that material is also used for rituals to purify during the rituals and it's rubbed on the body of, uh, of the one who's in the ritual. The nails actually reflect to, uh, to the uh, West African, and I think especially the Congo and Kisinkondi, which was the power figure. 
and like every nail is a praying, every nail had a judicial meaning, every nail was connecting to something of that society. That's why these things became power figures. So reflecting by using the nails, I am actually see that as a connection that came actually from Africa and uh, went to, to Suriname. So in the African diaspora, things travel like forms, patterns, and especially this Nkissing Kondi, the power figure, traveled to Suriname, but it's used in a very different way, but with the same sort of meaning. And that's kind of connected to, my, uh, to the other piece in the center space with the horizontality. Uh, the horizontality, which you kind of find back on the Atlantic. I haven't made the three pieces which are hanging on top of it as ships or spaceships. Something the audience are, is very much reflecting to it. But what I'm happy about that, that suspended part is that there's a certain rhythm inside, there's a certain uh, movement inside. So that rhythm and movement, and also maybe the shape of the, of the pieces are kind of recalling the idea of ship. But the moment the idea of ships are there, there's already a connection to, to water, to movement, to replacement or migration. Just like the whole installation I called visiting deities, visiting the gods. And uh, underneath the suspended uh, parts is a table of about nine meters long. And uh, the table sets on a, a dry riverbed. The dry riverbed is, reflects actually the absence of water. So in this installation, it is possible to look at it in different layers, right? So you can look at it as a layer of the, the problem of water we're having. But at the same time, in my case, it's actually reflecting to what has, what went over water and what is sort of like underneath the sea or whatever that, uh, that carry a certain history. Talking about history, then we already get into the connection of, of migration, of the Dutch slave trade to the Americas and what these people brought with them, what kind of aesthetic they brought with them and how we can relate to how we can be inspired uh, by, these, by this aesthetic to make work. Uh, so the table called the Cabra Tafra is, um, is actually a table I set for the ancestor. And if I look at the frictions we're having in our society, I think it's so important that, uh, or uh, as well in the Winti, the religion, there is a ritual for the ancestor, and it's important to purify something that happened in the past to find a way to live in the future. So the table surface, it, it, I made like panels and covered the panels with textiles. All these textiles are coming from uh, Suriname, which they are, where they are used in the ritual for the ancestor. The top of it I covered with kaolin, uh, a material that's also used in, in, in Vinti for purification during the, the ritual. And on the surface top, I carved the lines of the grid again in the kaolin. This piece has like a lot of layers. For instance, the, the bottle of water, which actually do come from three, three different rivers. Like one river is in Suriname, the river where I was born nearby, and uh, the Hudson in New York, the river I've been living nearby as well last in 2018 in New York, and then the Amstel River in the Netherlands where I also lived nearby. So it happened to be that I'm close to those rivers and the water is actually in this work reflecting to the triangle of uh, the triangle of Suriname, New York, and the Netherlands, where there has been an exchange with the English for Suriname, and the Dutch went to 
to the uh, plantation economy in Suriname. So with this water, I'm actually referring to that triangle where, where as well uh, slave trade happened. The influence of Africa is very important and there have been uh, 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 patterns uh, traveled to Suriname and uh, so this geometric form which is which you find back in Suriname and me coming from that perspective I think it's important to to look at the 20th century modernist and uh, relate to that by uh, by looking at it as an inspiration coming from from the Amazon context. I do see parallels with the, with the 10th century modernists. So I'm using that actually as an entrance to the audience to understand the work in the first layer and then the second layer they sort of like get into into a larger narrative.